G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring. Hey, before I bought my 300 series Land Cruiser, I actually had a 70 series cruiser on order as well. So specifically a dual cab 79 series, that's the dual cab full drive U. So I've always had a soft spot for 70s. I absolutely love them. I love that platform for a lot of reasons. So when I got the opportunity to spend three days uh, full driving in one and camping out of one, actually full driving in a couple, I drove a couple of them on this trip, I seized it. Uh, and if anything, it really reinforced the love that I have for that car. And chatting to the fellows that have owned those cars and put you know, hundreds of thousands of kilometers on them gave me a lot to reflect on uh, having just bought, having not gone ahead with buying one and buying a, a 300 series cruiser. So I've got a lot of footage from these three days I spent driving uh, a 79 series dual cab and a 76 series wagon. And, uh, and I've got a lot of footage of, of chatting to the owners. So I put together a little bit of a video um, it's not like a, a, a direct review or a comparison of the two cars. It's just a bit of a frank chat with these two fellows that own them um, about my experience spending three days in them. Anyway, I'm gonna roll that on, but before I do, I've still got um, a couple of giveaways. So I thought this was gonna wrap up around Christmas time, but I've got a bit more gear to give away than I initially thought. I've got another handheld UHF radio from Oricom. So this is the DTX 600. It's the same handheld that I use. It's a five watt unit, it's rechargeable, um, and it's waterproof and dustproof. So that's a beauty, it's a lime green one. If you wanna get your hands on that, all you've gotta do is look out for the code word somewhere in this video and stick it in the comment section below. Tiff will pick someone over uh, after seven days of this video being live, and she'll contact you to get your details and send that out to you. Righto, three days in a cruiser. Let's roll that footage. So I'm with, um Pete from WA Camping Adventures on one of his trips, and well, I'm supposed to be riding shotgun, but I've taken over the wheel. He's been kind enough to let me have a drive of the beast off road. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity to come away with him because there's a couple of things I want to film anyway. I'm not filming the trip video, the trip video is on his channel, it's his trip, I'm just tagging along. But one of the things I wanted to film, especially on this trip, was something on these 70 series cruisers. And this is a great one for it because Pete's obviously got his 76. He's put nearly 200,000 Ks on it, so he knows what he's, um, what he's talking about. He's very knowledgeable with these. Also got Aaron from AGD Autos on this trip, the bloke who's done the fit out on the 300 by the time you're watching this. Uh, he's got a 79, a dual cap, and also Davo the Butcher's tagging along, and he's got a 76 as well. So three blokes that have had 70s for a long time. Um, you know, a real wealth of knowledge on it. I wanted to have a bit of a drive of both of their cars, probably this one and Azza's uh, dual cab, and chat to them about owning one and some of the intricacies and the oddities and, you know, the sort of, the character of the car. Because um, they are definitely an iconic vehicle and it was way up there on my list of cars to get. I ended up getting the 300 because I think it probably ticked more of the boxes for me. See the big bruise jumping across. We're out on the summertime track, by the way, down in the southwest, Don Castro, probably should have mentioned that. Beautiful track. But yeah, just thought it'd be a cool opportunity. By the time this video comes out, I'll have had the 300, done a couple of um, couple of runs in it. Not so much gonna be a comparison between the two vehicles, because I don't think, you're comparing apples with oranges, they're built for different things, but that's kind of what I wanted to chat about. What these weapons are built for, uh, and, and why I ended up getting the 300 and not one of these, even though, I do love these things, and probably at a different stage of my life, or if I was doing different things, this is what I would have been in. 100% I would have been in a 70. So we'll see where the weekend takes us. Looking forward to driving these cars, and I'm looking forward to this trip. So I sort of touched on it, but you've had this for, you're just shy of 200,000 Ks. Yeah, mate, yeah. How, how many years is that? Uh, so I bought it in 2015. Oh, you've put a lot of Ks yeah, on Yeah, dude, I've, I've had it for like eight years now. Whoops. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. That's probably perfect timing, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> so you use it, obviously, you're a bricklayer. You're towing a, a dual axle trailer around yep. full of all your gear, your tools. Yep. And it's then a workhorse you, for sure, man. And then you, yep. it's also your family car, uh, and it's also, obviously, your trip car for doing stuff like this. Yeah, so obviously my wife's got a, a little family SUV, which yep. we use to come over your house and stuff like that. But yep. this here is, you know, for beach days, overlanding with you guys, any tracks or um, and work. Yeah. Completely work, towing sand around and stuff like that. So th these are things I've noticed and I want sort of your opinion yep. as well. I reckon they are a super fun car. It's like an off-road buggy. Absolutely. It's a little bit of an upgrade of a beach buggy. Yeah. Um, 
but there's nothing more fun than driving these, but you'll absolutely notice the difference in comfort. Oh, she's gonna be bouncy. <laughs> oh, I hope everything's tied on well. <laughs> ah, it's so much fun. I've, I don't know any different cam because yeah. I've always drove, um, driven leaf sprung vehicles. And I'm the same, I'm the same. Yeah. I've never had a, a, a like a comfortable car or yeah. anything like that. It feels to me like it's almost like a big Suzuki Sierra. Definitely. And, and one thing I don't reckon people appreciate about these cars, very nimble because it's quite narrow. Yeah. And it, it's, I don't know, it, the seating position also, you're very high over the track and high over the dashboard, I feel. Yeah. I love that feeling. I love being high. I love being high. Okay, okay, that's the Approach and departure angle look pretty Ter good on it. Terrific. Yeah. Absolutely terrific, I feel. And you can get... A good middle ground anyway, you know? You can pretty comfortably, easily put 33s, 35s even. Stock. Yeah. And I did. Yeah, 100% I did. Yeah, I got the stock. I got the 33s before I got a lift. The only thing with that is the... It's a big V8 motor. Yes. They're pretty lazily tuned, though, eh? Like they're, Very they're, lazily. They're capable of huge numbers. Yep. People... And Aaron's is chipped and tuned, and he Same makes... Same with Dave's, yep. Oh, is it? Yep. Yeah, Dave's are tuned. This one's not, but it absolutely has no problem sitting on 110. No. Nope. It's got torque for days up hills. Yep. I don't see how you would need any more power, me personally, because I've, I've come from a four-cylinder um, Navara, yeah. and I've come from a Land Cruiser before that, a four-cylinder Bandera. I don't need any more power than this has, so if it's going to buy me reliability and yes. longevity, that's all I want. And that's that's why the mines and stuff were, hey, and all exactly, the NCOs, man. they you, were snapping yeah, these up. You can't deny that. You yeah. just can't. The only way I could see that falling short would be if you um, if you were towing something big, like a big full-size van, yep. I reckon you'd probably need a little bit more from it. Definitely well, agree it. with you. Yeah, It'd I agree nice. with you there, yeah. yeah. Just to keep that same sort of feeling in the car, to have that confidence in overtaking and stuff like that. Yeah, but so. off-road, what I love, all that torque is down low. I mean, yep. I'm in low range anyway, so it's talking. But um, it's like a tractor. You, oh. The power band sort of is coming on, what, around 1,500 RPM yep. or something? Yep, spot on. And then the sweet spot is around 3,000 for hill climbs and stuff like that. Yeah, right. Beautiful. It's whistling at that at that, uh, at that that rev range. So was this, was your 76, was it, this is a workmate? Yes, 100% a workmate, yeah. Was it, I know you got it at like 25, 30,000 Ks. Yep. Was it X mines or? Yes, it, it is, but it was a manager's car, I believe. This is what I got told. I was gonna, <laughs> Just to take I it was with a salt. Every salesperson will tell you that. Yeah, it was a manager's car every and car getting ready to lot. go on site. Every car on the lot was a manager's car on yeah. the line. So across the door door handle height, there was like a red band. <laughs> no, not in the floods at all. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's been the most reliable car I've ever had. Fun car camp. Yeah, I'm loving it. Off-road yeah. weapon. On-road, road noise was horrible. Road noise is absolutely horrible. I'm, But I'm only... I'm. That's because I'm used to it. You yeah. notice it straight away. And I come from the D-Max, which has got a lot of road noise Yeah, too. exactly. So, um, they're things you're going to take into consideration, man. Long drives in this um, can be a bit taxing. Yeah. But then once you get to, for, for you, once you get to your destination and you're in a place like this... Which is twice as rough it. on these tracks, yeah. it's more fun for me. I don't know what it is, man. So, rear sprung... Um, yes. Rear end uh, leaf sprung, sorry. Yes, yep. And uh, that means you can carry, it's capable of carrying big weight and all the rest of it. Yep. It's probably cheaper for manufacturing and stuff, I imagine. Yep. But uh, it does mean that it's a bouncier, rougher ride, yeah? Very, it's very rough, man. Can, you know, compared to something like a, I've been in Dave's, I've been in a Pajero, you yep. know, like the NS's. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. They're man. comfy as, man. Yeah. You know, it's a big difference, but, you know, there's compromise in everything. So let me ask you, for the, for the sake of the camera, really, because I yep. know the answer. Go ahead. But what, what, Will you replace this with? Honestly, I've always said from the start a 200 series. And that's Just because what... it's a good family vehicle for me, mate. Okay, that's cool. what it'll be. Cool. And that pretty much is exactly the reason why I'm looking at that. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a, and it's a it's a beautiful car. I mean, you know. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Imagine kids in that. Yeah! <laughs> you know what I mean? Imagine yeah. kids in this. They'd love it. The wife wouldn't know, I don't think. And so that is pretty much why I'm not in a 70, man, in a yeah, nutshell. Yeah, and that's what it is. If, it, if I was doing what you were doing, if I was a tradie and I was doing mainly boys' weekends and stuff, it yep. would be this every day of the week. So the thing I want to ask you, though, is I want to wait for you to drive Aaron's car or be in yeah, Aaron's I'm car. He's got a much more expensive lift kit and suspension kit. He's also got it's the GXL, more so yes. a little bit more sound. It is, absolutely. So let's see what you think of that. Yeah, interested. Yep.
One more thing, actually, I wanted to ask, Pete. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing with the 70 Series is the wheel track issue. If you don't know, I think what happened was I was trying to shoehorn that, that motor in. Yep. And the body was a bit narrow. 100%. They swapped that motor at the last minute. That's what it was. So they made yep. the they end up making the front axle had to be uh, wider yep. than the rear. Yep. So you end up with um, different... Uh, I believe it's 55 mil each. Track. Time. I believe it is. So, so there's basically like, you either just run with it and you just have it how it is but I did you ever do that did you ever have standard yes, wheels yes I did and I, I've actually got a lot to say about that yeah. as well uh, perfect for mud and stuff like that but there's a big difference when you swap it to you know widening your axle with one of those expensive J Max or something like that or putting in spaces which you shouldn't mean uh, shouldn't do but if you uh, throw the offset uh, to, uh, rims on yeah you'll find that it's huge dude because without that you um, Firstly, you're plowing a new track with the back yes, wheels. Yeah. And on sandy tracks like this, you, oh, you're jumping in and out, and it's super noticeable. I've seen that, being behind a, a 70 that didn't have track correction, yeah, and, and they crap. You can see it, man. You can see it. And yeah. they actually look weird on the road as well. I they look they like use, they've been in a crash. I wonder if they, use, they probably use more fuel off-road, because they're pushing Yeah, you tracks. are. You're plowing a new track, so you're actually not helping yourself. But So, um, so Pete's got around difference. that by running different offsets front and rear, right? And that's annoying in itself. That's super annoying, because I can't rotate, or I can only rotate. And that was know? my next question. Yep. So if you have a flat, you've only got one spare? Exactly. But the spare, you know, it, it'd fit on, but I've never touched wood. <laughs> I've never have had to yet. This trip, that's going to happen. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I'm calling it right now. So it wouldn't do any damage to any of your running gear but not it's just not ideal it'll just look stupid <laughs> yeah. so that's how pete's got around it i'll show you later when we jump in with um aaron what he's done he's gone a different way the more expensive route super like super expensive you know if you're gonna have a car for a long time if i had the money back then or even if i had the money now i don't think i still would have done it i really wouldn't have i'm I, and that might be foolish in a way but there are a lot of flaws to this vehicle that's the weird thing but there is something that everyone loves yeah, I was going to say and yet we love them you, you, I, how could you explain it how could you explain what you love about this car how does a diesel sound like that yeah you know, they have a lot of character oh, they do yeah. dude they do like they're drivers yeah yeah, yeah. can't help it you know yeah the car chose me it did <laughs> that's some Harry Potter shit <laughs> <laughs> anyway you can you can you can notice that offset difference there's the front and there's the rear, much wider, a uh, much um, deeper dish. So that's how he gets around that. Obviously these only come in manual unless you do a, uh, uh, I think people were putting 200 series transmissions in them through like wholesale automatics and different mobs like that. Expensive exercise, I think it's around the 30 grand mark. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong there. You know, there's people are on both sides of the camp on that one, manual or auto off-road. Look, nowadays for me, I think automatic is, is, is a lot nicer to drive on-road and off-road, but that's personal opinion. Um, the thing, I had a 79 on order, uh, and at the time that I had it, it was on order for like, well, it was over a year, and they brought out the new model 70s while I was waiting, and I had heard whispers that they might be putting a different motor in it, they might be putting a different transmission in it, and I did think to myself, if they offered a 70, with an automatic transmission and either the new V6 or the outgoing VDJ, I'd have to snap it up. If it had an auto, that would have got me over the line, I reckon. I could have worked with the road noise and the bumpiness and all the rest of it. And these are quite expensive to modify too. All cars are, but these, there's just endless accessories available and you can just spend endless amounts of money on them. And uh, I probably would to get it where I wanted. But yeah, if it come with an auto, that would have changed things for me. Uh, but what they end up doing, you already know anyway, I'm sure, but the, they put a smaller four-cylinder diesel in the automatic variants, and that, that would have been no good for me. Um, I probably could have made do with it, but, uh, yeah, the smaller motor didn't really interest me in a big rig towing a big van. Anyway, very interesting to hear from Pete with his experiences, uh, and I... I find it fascinating because he loves that thing and I know he does and yet he, he still says when he upgrades uh, eventually, which is in no time soon, he, he'd be looking at a 200 at the moment with what's available. So yeah, interesting. Anyway, we'll jump in with Aaron in a bit once we get further down the track and we'll have a chat to him. Ooh, what's going on there? Obligatory roadside beer stop. Cheers. Are you still in my cordial? I want a free service for that. <laughs> you pay a premium out here in the remote areas? Absolutely, that's a $400 sip. That's a remote cordial. <laughs> so 
swap drives now. I'm going to jump in with Aaron in his uh, 79. It's got baller suspension. I'll tell you all about it when we're in the car. It's on bigger wheels. It's been chipped and tuned and all that sort of stuff. We'll find out the exact details, but be interesting to, to compare the two. It's going to let me have a drive. Huh? Did you say about the character? Mine's got more character. Yours has more character? Yeah. This will be fun. <laughs> you nervous? Yeah. You should be. I am. Yeah, yeah, you should be. Yeah. All right, straight up. We're stepping into luxury now. Can I just kill that? Oh, you got. I love these. That's an aftermarket thing that Aaron sells. You will recognise Aaron because the build series would have been by the time they watch this anyway. Yep. So Aaron's my mechanic from AGD Auto that built the 300, most of it anyway. And we're in his 79. Oh. Danger. Yep. Danger. Danger. Yeah, it's beautiful through here, isn't it? Mm. I'm a little bit nervous driving Aaron's because it's um it's Aaron's is the show pony. It's got all the good gear on it. And it's it's graphite, isn't it yours? It is, yeah. Graphite black, so you gotta I've gotta look after the paintwork on the scratchy stuff. So he's been very trusting. Or stupid. <laughs> my, my poor detailer detailed the car last week, Aaron from Big Tasty Detailing. And uh, he was a bit upset when he found out that four days later I was taken on a trip again. He'll be more upset when he finds out that I've driven it. <laughs> cool, man. It's a different car to drive already. Yeah. Um, what's it doing power-wise? Uh, 210 horsepower and about 760 newton meters of torque. Yeah. Is yours remapped? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. So no, um, still factory ECU, no piggyback. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got all the flash gear, man. You got the big head unit. Yes, yeah, it head unit in here. Um, cup holders, because if you own a 70, you don't get any cup holders. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not much more inside. Did speak upgrade. Did sound deadening. So that made a big difference, sound deadening? Oh, massive. Okay. Massive, yeah, they are quite noisy. They're a truck, so, yeah, sitting on 100 k's an hour. Um, trying to talk to the missus or the kids in the back, you can't hear anything. Yes, now that's gonna be my next question. I'll wait till we're on the road and I get a bit of road noise and that, but I'm interested to chat to you about, because Pete's using his as a vehicle for work and he's doing yes. boys trips. Yep. He's got his music blare and his arm out the window most of the time anyway. That's the sort of dude Pete is. You've got your family in here, you're towing a van. It's a work yes. car for you too, but yep. it's also the family getaway car. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get on the road and um, we'll have a bit of a chat about that, I reckon. So we're out of the bush and airing up now, but this is a good opportunity to have a quick look and a quick chat, well, as is airing up about the suspension, because that's a major difference between the two. From factory, they're both coil front, leaf rear, which makes for um, good load carrying capacity, but makes for a much rougher ride. I noticed that in Pete's, like you would have seen me bouncing up the hill. So much fun. Um, but a lot rougher ride. Aaron's uh, is so much more comfortable, but that's because he spent the coin. So at the same time, I was telling you about Pete with the track correction thing, how the front and rear are different tracks. Um, as his way of getting around that was by replacing the entire rear diff. So you've got a, a J-Max rear diff housing? Yes, correct. So it's um, uh, wider to make up for the track yep. issue? Yep. What's it worth, man? Just ballpark. I'm not asking for a quote. Um, <laughs> 9500 Yeah. Yep. No and right, then what's so installed on that? Eight, roughly. That's including installation. Oh, okay. So yeah, nine and a half change grand. out of 10 grand. <laughs> You're towing a caravan with this thing now? Correct. Yep. How is it? Are these a suitable vehicle for someone that wants to do long distance touring with a family towing a, a family sized caravan, caravan, in your, your opinion? Oh. This is going to get some YouTube comments. Yeah. Um, personally, I would say no. Yeah. Uh, just because I've experienced it now, it is um, yeah, it is hard hard with the kids. Um, some trips will do a whole eight eight to ten hour drive in, in a day, which is hard on the kids anyway. Yeah. Isn't it? And measure it over the back seat of a two hundred series, where it's got twice the amount of room and there's comfort there. Yeah bench seat in the back here it's a rock hard seat and the a car that's and i've experienced this because i've had cars that are, have a lot of road noise and that what you know like uh just re require more input to drive yep they are more fatiguing aren't they like eight hours yeah. in a in a vehicle that's uh, 
like like eight, eight hours in in Pete's car compared to eight hours in a stock two hundred series yeah, is very different. Is totally different, eh? Yeah. It's like quite fatiguing. Correct. So, what would you look at next for where you're at in your life now? Which uh, is a shop car, full driving with the boys, and yeah. um, and also something that can tow a, a caravan with a family on board. Yeah. So right now, the next uh, I think the next step will be a three hundred. Yeah. Um, I also like the idea of the Tundra, but yes. it depends on when that's going to be released. Yeah. Uh, but then when it's released, you're trying to find parts for it. Um, or Australian-made products, so it takes it'll take another 12 months, like it did with the 300, to to get accessories uh, for it. Yeah. Um, Which is hard yeah. for you because you, you again you want to be able to show off what you can do yeah. with the car for customers. Yeah, straight away. But um, but yeah, 300 definitely. Now that we've uh, worked on them, we've serviced them, uh, we've done a few fit-outs on them. Now uh, that's yeah, that'll be the next. Car. So the major differences, like for me, between the between like the wagons, the two hundreds, the three hundreds, or any of the seventies, between the two, yep. other than comfort, road noise, handling, um, you know, payload, towability, stuff like that, the major difference for me, and I've already spoken about it a little bit, is the transmission going from uh, manual to auto or vice versa. What's your take on that? This thing's manual. Yep. Just for reference, to put an automatic in something like this, it's around it's thirty grand plus, isn't it, to get a new auto in yeah. this? Yeah. Would I convert it? Um, yes, I would. Yep. That's only because pulling the van, it does. Uh, yeah, it does drive me nuts a bit. Yeah. But then when I'm four being with mates, the manual, the manual's fun. Manual's fun, but. Uh, Honestly, man, like with an auto, you get stuck less. You know what I mean? Because you don't have to worry about timing gear changes. Yeah. It's not, you're not. There's not as much user inputs. So you're not driving it as much. So I get when you, when you say I it's not. Say the only thing is, yeah, you're just taking the fun out a little yeah. bit when you just stick your foot to the floor. Yeah. But, yeah. So um, I do understand that. It's a hard one. The '70s are wicked. Like I, I do love them. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. You just got to work out whether it it fits here for uh, for what you want to do. Yes, and I think that's exactly the same sort of. Um, that's how I made my decision. Both were I were absolutely capable of what I needed from a car, yep. but it's um, I had to think about what I had to prioritise what I'm going to be doing most of, and what ticks more of those boxes. And if I was if I was Pete every day of the week, I would be I'd be in a seventy over two hundred or three hundred. So I'm I'm interested to hear that he wants to he's looking at a well he will be looking at a two hundred to replace that. Yes, and I, I I find that interesting because I think a seventy is perfect for him. But, um, but for you, I understand why you'd look for that comfort. Uh, with the long trips with the family, that's the big, that's the clincher for me. Because road noise, man, and 10 hours of driving a manual with road noise and uh, and live axles is fatiguing. Yep. I've been there. All right, thank you, mate. No drums. I thoroughly enjoyed a few days in those 270 series cruises. And like I said at the start of the video, if anything, it probably really reinforced the love that I have for that platform. 70 series cruisers are just cool. They're, um, it's a big diesel V8. They're really capable off-road with the right modifications. They're fun to drive. They're just really fun. Um, they're simple, they're bush tough, they're reliable. They've got a lot going for them. And I think in a, if it, at a different time in my life, if I didn't have a family on board and I wasn't doing long distances towing a three ton plus caravan, then I'd be in a 70 series. You know, in fact, if, if you could have both in an ideal world, that would be awesome. A 70 series cruiser for the camping and the full driving trips and a 300 series or a 200 series or something a bit more comfortable for the long distance family caravan trips. The 300 series is comfortable. It makes heaps of power. It tows that van pretty effortlessly. Um, and I've, it's still Toyota reliability, Toyota um, build quality. So I think I've made the right call there for us. Yes, it did cost uh, $15,000 more than a 70 series would have. The 70 I had on order was about 85 grand and I paid 99 for the 300 series. But I know when I've, um, cause I'm quite an analytical person and I'm, when I've spreadsheeted what I would have spent on a 79 versus what I've spent on a 300, the interesting thing is I, I would have probably ended up spending more on a 79 to get it uh, at the level that I'd want it to be doing that long distance touring with a family on board. When you look at soundproofing, power upgrades, um, more comfortable seats, uh, putting a canopy on the back so it's actually livable for camping and stuff like that. 
anyway, this video was never about justifying our purchase or anything like that. It's, it's, it was more about um, a really fun opportunity to spend a couple of days in a car that I love. And uh, thank you to Aaron and Pete for having me along and um, giving me your honest feedback and your honest opinion on things. It was actually really interesting to hear from both Aaron and Pete that the next car they buy would be something more similar um, to what I bought. So they're obviously in similar sort of stages in their lives as well. Very interesting. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, in an ideal, ideal world, I'd have both. A 70 for full driving and camping and a 300 for, uh, for towing the van. But I think I'll have to sell a few more towels to get there. <laughs> Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one.